Peter Adamczyk, Program Manager, Google Cultural Institute. What Google technology can be used to help create accessibility and inclusion for all? We have YouTube, for example, which does automatic transcription of the videos. So right away you come away with a transcript that's pretty close in most cases um, to the spoken word. Um, so right away you have additional access that way. In addition, we've got the translation services. Um, so once you have the text, you can start providing multilingual content um, that the institutions also wouldn't generally be able to provide on their own. Um, so in that way, Google's again providing broader access. What is the Google Art Project? Um, it was an uh, experiment, really, to see whether or not Google could um, start pulling together the content from different cultural institutions and make a larger collection out of all of them and start showing pieces from all of the different institutions together in one place um, so that a person interested in a particular kind of art or a particular artist um, could find more about them without having to go to all the different sites but rather have one place to go and then to be able to go to those individual institutions if they wanted to find out more. And it's not just the highlights. It's always the idiosyncratic or the really kind of special collections that, a, that um, a particular museum has chosen to, to collect and curate that we're really interested in. Um, it started with a colleague of mine, Amit Sood. Um, he always tells the story of growing up in India and never really being able to visit a museum, but always interested in art. And for him, this is very much about democratizing access and opening up access, especially for remote, um, homebound um, audiences, lifelong learners, people who simply wouldn't be able to get to the institutions. Um, and to be able to collect all of this art from around the world is, is one of the major motivations for the piece. Um, as far as um, access more broadly, we're very much involved in making sure that the site remains multilingual, um, that it's able to um, provide the visual contrast and the um, objects themselves in a way that um, is appealing on screen, but is something still that people can really enjoy on all sorts of different devices. Um, the text that's being presented is, again, um, always with an eye towards web accessibility standards and something that screen readers can handle and so on. Um, so very much we're, we're conscious of that audience. What is the Google Cultural Institute? The Google Cultural Institute is a broader initiative um, throughout Google. Um, it contains the Art Project as well as World of Wonders and a few other um, initiatives where um, Google is working with nonprofits and cultural institutions, um, libraries and archives, in addition to museums, um, to try to find ways to get their content online. We started with the Nelson Mandela Foundation, with Yad Vashem, um, some archives in Germany, um, to be able to um, find ways to get their content um, to a wider audience, and to be able to tell their stories using their material, and to uh, again, leverage uh, Google's technology to do that. This uh, accessibility is just something that's really built into all of the projects that we work on. Um, it's, there's reviews, there's content and user uh, interface and design reviews that go into looking specifically at accessibility issues. Um, when things are translated, whether or not, you know, even if the words fit on the screen or um, those kinds of issues have to be addressed. And of course, all of that goes through um, the, the design and development phases that we all work on. The idea of disability and access is something maybe a little outmoded, that it's much more about a spectrum of ability and everyone needing augmented um, uh, sort of possibilities when it comes to being online, whether it's about memory, whether it's, it's about vision or, you know, um, the way that information is being presented. Um, you always have to take into account the complexity of the information that you're trying to convey and the story that you're trying to tell. Um, so that the choices you're making in the design of how you do it, whether or not it's high contrast screen readers, whether or not it's um, high resolution images, or you know, uh, again, transcripts and uh, translation, all of those things are opening up um, access to the content, but they're just good design, first and foremost, that they're beneficial for everyone and without necessarily carving out a niche and saying you're doing this especially for someone in particular. It's about a broadening of access and a broadening of the possibilities for your entire user audience. Copyright Art Beyond Sight 2014